Hey guys, how's it going? Let's get done picking up this 1997 Dodge Ram from a friend of mine who retired it from plowing because it just got a little too long in the tooth. It's got some issues to it. He parked it, I'd say about four years ago. It had a engine misfire or multiple engine misfire issues and the uh, chain inside the transfer case is jumping. So the chain is stretched out at a minimum. Plus whatever's been going on with it for sitting for four years, that has have helped add to its issues. I'm trying to get you out of the wind. But my goal is just to try to get it back to being a plow truck and uh, use it for off-road purposes, not nothing for on the road. I think it's gone past that. But let's go get it back to the shop. I still have to go get my other trailer and get the plow that is in a storage unit and then we'll have all the pieces. do it anymore is gonna take out the tail light. Now all we gotta do is get it off that trailer and onto that lift. Uh, should be able just to lift it up and have it roll back. Let's go see how we do. Check this out, looks like it's okay. You got it. Awesome. She's a peach, huh? Yeah, the door, I think the door latch is crapping out on it. Yeah. All busted out of the, the body of it. I think somebody tried welding it once before. That is for another time. Let's see if we get it up in the air. We'll take a peek underneath and see how things are. Yeah, let's go see if it's got anything left of a frame. Hopefully. A little punky right there. Gas tank. Ga both gas tank straps are rotted off of it, and it's got looks like um, big ass tie wraps. Hold the gas tank up. <laughs> yeah, that's an issue. Yeah. That. I saw what looked like gear oil on the trailer. Maybe it's just a drain plug in the front with the front main. The front main leaking. Hard to say. I believe it's a 360 is what's in it. It's flaky, but it's not. I don't see the frame blown out anywhere. Transfer case. What is that right there? So I wonder, we might be able to address that right maybe around the truck and not pull the transfer case down. Again, let's get ahead of ourselves. That frame right looks decent. Right there looks funky though, huh? Let's see where it's all. Look at that, that right there. 
And it's never going to get on the road again. So I can, if I can, too concerned. As long as they'll stay together and push, push, you know, dirt. <laughs> Trilly just rotted out. All right. What do you say we drop it down to the ground and we shove a battery in it? See if anything happens. <laughs> the rotors, you can tell some see, look at the, the rotors, how crusty they are. All right, let's go drop her. Yeah, let's see what we got under the hood. Yeah, it's a 5.9 is a 360. And that looks about the same as under the truck, right? <laughs> All right, let's go get the battery, shove it in there, and yeah, see if it even cranks. So close. Huh. The hood lit up. The headlight lit up. <laughs> what you got? What you gotta do? You don't have the right battery. Let's go give her a spin. Yeah, I got a. Uh, about a quarter to a half a mile dirt driveway making noise that I have a big old case 5e with a plow on it but it's kind of big in tight spaces shut that door shut that up huh I think the chances are it's gonna uh, kick that battery terminal out anything I don't think it's trying huh if you'll inject it you didn't have to give any gas so let's see It's not like it kicks on one, doesn't it? Hmm. Let's, um, now that we cranked it, let's go plug a, um, engine analyzer into it, an ODB. Is that gas gonna stay on? Do we, is there even any gas in it? That might be an issue, huh? Show them a little above, a little above. Oh, stop. All right, yeah, let's go plug in, see if we get any codes coming out of it. A lot of fails. This vehicle has no fault codes. Then why don't you run? <laughs> Is the key on? Yeah, key's on. Hmm. Let's um try shoving some like starter fluid or something down the intake. See if it does anything. You gotta figure it's had no battery in it, so it probably wouldn't have stored anything. Let's see. Look at that. Now let's see what we get. You didn't see that coming, did you? Those crappy battery terminals. That annoying sound. Oh, come on. All right, let me get some pliers. Right tool for the right job. Let's see if that'll stay. Evaporated. Yeah, problem is that the time that went by may have uh, had the fogging gas go away. Try one more time. Think we get anything? There it goes. 
Ha! Huh. Puffing anything? Well, smoke rings. <laughs> it's blowing smoke rings. All right, let's see if we got anything now. Go my put my foot on that alarm. They hop in. Shut up. Thank you. <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the keys off. Hopefully, it tells us something. Come on. All right, there we go. Ignition distributor engine speed input circuit. Ignition and or distributor engine speed input circuit. I don't think it has a distributor. I think it just uses a. Uh, like a prox, like a pickup. Let's go look at ignition components and see what we got under the hood. Go from there. All right, see what we got. It looks like somebody's been living in there. Is that a critter or is that just, that's just it's like a hood material? Uh, let's go follow the coil wires. Where do they go? Plug wires, rather. They are running to the back. Man, what a sucky place to have a that distributor back there. Oof. How do you get to that? That was a good design. Where's the coil? Hmm. Yeah, I ain't supposed to get that shirt. That's kind of a sucky place. Let's go wander. It's got a coil right here. Hmm. It looks like it's might have seen a little bit better days, huh? Looks like it's kind of you get through in there better than I can. Does the back side of that look a little blown out? Yeah, it looks like all the plug wires go to the distributor cap. That is back there. Holy. <laughs> Cut a hole in the front of the truck to get to that in the cab. That's got a suck, huh? Let's, um, I'm gonna do a little uh, price shopping real quick. Some of this stuff is like so super cheap that it might be worth just trying to chase it. We go price a coil real fast and see if we can go grab one of those. We'll just throw that in, get that out of the way. The back side of it looks like it's kind of split open. I don't really think that's probably what it is because it seems like it does spark once in a while. But let's go throw that in first. We'll start with that and then uh, I think there's a pickup on the engine somewhere. That is like a, probably on the flywheel in the front of the back. I gotta go look that up too. That'll send a signal for spark so it knows where it is. You know, probably, I don't know if it's once a revolution or, you know, does it send a pulse? A hundred times a revolution. Don't know. Does that look like it? $18.99. I'm in China. Cheap enough. It looks like it. Let's go throw that on there real quick. See if we get any kind of better response from it. We know we have ignition issue. 
I don't think that's quite what it is, but let's go give that a shot. I think the chances are they're going to come off without breaking it. You got a nut on the other side, hopefully. I think so. You guys that don't live in the Rust Belt, you don't know what living is. It's probably gonna snap. Don't even bother with losing that bolt. No amount of lube in the world is gonna get that off. Uh, it is on another bracket. Let's kind of look at it, see if we can take that bracket off and then deal with it. I'm gonna have to just fight with those. Let's go get a, uh, a beefy ratchet. See if I can snap them off. Yeah, it did go. Yeah, even get in on that bottom one. Looks like it's kind of sunk into the plastic, doesn't it? Yeah. It's because it's like the plastic's pulling away. Huh, that coil's in great shape. <laughs> How about now? Can we get it now? I have to hammer that socket on with a hammer. Yeah, that coil's punky, huh? Nothing wrong with that coil. <laughs> no matter what, that should have been replaced. Yeah, as you can, uh, Get on there, wrap it on with a hammer. Chances aren't gonna drop it. Get on there. Think that'll stay? You think I'm gonna sort of strip right off? Can you take this 360? And like switch it over to carbureted, run it in an older car. I'm not sure. There we go. Okay, get a wrench on. Somehow get a wrench on that lower one. The chances are. I used to work on these high cars. The radiators cut into my gut. All right, let's go see. Corrosion got in that thing. And how puffed out the foot it is on the sides. All the way up and around, too. All up in there. Hey, right, I'm gonna go clean those bolts up so it'll be easier to put in. Let's go eyeball that new one. Make sure we're the apples and apples, huh? Uh, don't know. Let's go find out. Drop that sucker. It's 
the mechanics. You could see with your hands. Sometimes you have to. <laughs> We got a nut jammed in the wrench. I think assembly will go a little better. It's easier. Chances are I can get on that bottom one. You get one of those harnesses that you suspend yourself from above the engine bay. Watch it not click in. All right, let's see if that made any difference at all. I didn't primer or anything with a spray. See if it does anything. Ah, pretty much the same thing. Wait, yeah, 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 wait. <laughs> I said you're a little bit of gas. You can hear it kind of like where it like spins backwards. That right there. That's a timing issue. There it goes. A piccolo, piccolo, piccolo. <laughs> piccolo, piccolo, piccolo. Nope, I think we still have another issue, but again, that coil looked so bad. All right. Ignition, distributor, engine speed, input circuit. So wherever is giving engine speed. Well, that would be that flywheel thing, wouldn't it? Let me go look that up and we'll do a little search and see if I could chase for uh, whatever that part is too. You know what really long screwdrivers are good for? Pointing that stuff. So I think it might be that right there. I'm not sure. Either that or over in this area somewhere. We probably might be able to see it from underneath. Kind of describes it behind the cylinder head on the left side. Well, let me go see if I can order one and get one and we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> right? And what we're looking for should look like Hopefully you don't cut the wires, right? Does that look like it? Hmm. So this would probably go into the bell housing, I think, and then that's a pickup. Yeah, I don't think what we were looking at was it, but never know. Let's go look closer. Yeah, whatever that is right there, that thing that we're looking at. I don't think that's it. That might be like an oil pressure switch. My guess. Because this, because this has, you know, that has a plug right on the back of it. It looks like, you know, similar kind of shape, but I'm guessing this go downward. Let's go put the truck up in the air. Maybe with a mirror, we can kind of peek up around the bell housing and, and see where it is. Well, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to film it, much less get it out. But it is gonna, that's the bracket, the shiny part that we have. That's it, right there. So it's got a, a bolt there and a bolt there. And there's the, this is the wire going into the transmission right there. Oh, that's too bright for you. Yeah, there's the wire. I'm kind of wondering, I wonder if we, uh, Cut an access hole. <laughs> Won't be the first time I've done that. Let's go look inside the cab real quick on that tunnel and uh, see if you can pull that carpet away. Again, this is just going to be a yard truck. It's just a, a backyard beater. I don't know if that vent's going to be in a way. It's kind of like, it looks like where the body comes down and makes the angle. 
is right, I think it's right about, right about here. I don't know how much carpet and insulation and stuff is in here. We go pull some of this stuff back and see how this works out for us. <laughs> I made a mistake of leaning against the truck. <laughs> yes. Keep going. We just, we just peel our way all the way up to there. I was only joking about peeling it all the way back up into there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we're gonna hurt it none by doing this, huh? It's probably the best part of the metal of the truck, though. We'll peel that away. We're getting it with a cutting wheel. I'm trying to notch a section out. Let me see if we can get this out of here. I'm not sure how many more clips or anything are holding it. We can just, we can just cut it with a blade and get it out of there. And we want to get right where, right there, I think we're looking for. You know, there's a heat shield on the other side. Should we make like a little exploratory hole? Maybe if we can get it in it. Now, somewhere around there. Either there or here. We'll make like a little hole and take a peek. What's going on? I don't know where we're kind of going. I'm, I, I think it's right about here. I'm not positive though. We'll go low first. Good battery. One click. Take two. There's the heat shield. I should probably take that down out of our way from underneath. And we see if we get that out of the way, and then we'll have a, a good idea. Here's the reason why I'm, I'm kind of chasing it like this. Because I know those two bolts are really going to be rusted in there. They're steel going into aluminum. And by the rust that was on that bracket, just how the coil kind of came apart, it's it's going to be a bear. It's not like we can just kind of reach in with a socket and get them out real easy. We're going to have to fight with them. So. Take the heat shield out of the way. And it is way up in here we have to go. Right about there. There's a big seam right here where the sheet metal goes straight down in, like a flange, about an inch too. So you either gotta be above or below that. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to get a small cutting wheel in here. See if we can cut this back through here. There's the, that's the bolt for the heat shield right there. If I give myself an, an idea. And too bad, it's fairly tight. Too bad it was a little bit lower. Would have, would have worked out great. <laughs> uh, I think we might try, let's go underneath. I'm gonna try putting a wrench on them and see if I can get them to turn. It, it looks terrible, but we'll see. I have no idea. You can see what I'm even doing. Right out there. Sure get a good bite on it because if I slip off, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Either that or it's even probably just so rusted. Oh, there. there. It's a turn. I am definitely seeing with my hands. Is that turning or is the wrench just slipping off? I can't see anything. It is raining rust on me. Feels like a turn. The bolt feels like it's like off size. I got a 13 millimeter on it. Half inch 13. I believe it's 13. 12 doesn't fit. 
but I think it's corroded down a little bit on size. I'm gonna try getting, is there room for a socket? Not much room above it, whatever this is. I'm hitting. Ugh, right down my shirt. Is that the lower one or the higher one? I think that is the... Yeah. There we go. Shake my shirt out. Oh. Oh, that is a sucky location. Oh, that was the bolt that was in the way. Yeah, I wonder if I can um, get up there with a... Because that cable's in the way. If you're getting a socket on it, this, I don't know if we could bend this up, the ground strap, up out of our way to get on that. I don't know if a ratcheting wrench is going to help us. I'm going to try one, see what I get. We will take the little victories when we can. I'm going to go do a lap. Yeah, ratcheting wrench was what I was able to get on there. We see if we hopefully get on the other one. <sighs> you thought the first one sucked. Second one was even worse because you couldn't get a uh, the uh, ratcheting wrench around. It wasn't enough room, so I had to do the the wrench. Eep. Eep. <laughs> a little out of time. All right, now I'm gonna go see if I can get that wiggles in the hole at all. Hopefully, it's not just all rotted and rusted and corroded around it. Let's see if I can like poke at it with a stick. Can it move? It moves a little. It's gotta come straight up. At least it moves. I don't know if I'd be able to get like above there. It's still plugged in too. The other thing I got to deal with. We can get that off first. Will that give us any more room? I get under it. I do not want to break it off in there. <laughs> that would suck. Okay, I think I'm gonna try working my hand up in there and try to pull straight up on that. I don't think I think that rubber plug out. I don't know if you can see the rubber plug uh, right there. That's like holding it like a seal. Probably. I'm going to work on that because you guys are in the way. A moment for victory. Oh, what a pain in the ass. Look what's on the end of it. It's like all metal. How's that going to pick up anything? It's like a magnet. It's like a picked up rust. That's why it wouldn't work. Bet you if you clean that off, it'd probably work. We're not taking that chance though. Any cracks or anything in it? Hmm. Let's go eyeball it next to the other one. <sighs> I was going to get it back in, right? It's a curled tail up, but looks like it. What the plugs look like. I say it to go. Well, I am going to save you the struggle and me the struggle of trying to get the camera up. And then when I'm trying to film, it was ridiculous. I'm like, <laughs> I'm bunched up to my arm, like up inside there, trying to. Pull the thing apart. I'm gonna take those two screws. I'll hit them on the wire wheel. So hopefully I can kind of get them in there, and like spin them in with my fingers instead of trying to jockey them around. And I'll meet you back at the truck. Yeah, just trying to start that one. I, I pulled it back up to look at it, and it automatically it's picking up a rust chip. So I'm gonna take an air gun, do my best to try to blow all the crap out that's around there. So the plug, the plug. Is on the end of this. You see where it's flopping around? That's all play it's got. It's got to go on the end of that, right? Do you think they could make it like an inch longer? Just that's all I'm asking is an inch. Joke there somewhere. Anyway, now I was pulling on it. I pulled the wires out of the plug. Yeah. 
But I'm gonna go back underneath to see if we can get that harness to kind of pull down somewhere. I may just put some length of wires on them and run them back. I just can't get into it with my hands to, to click them. I had them like almost together. I just couldn't click them together. There was not enough room to get around them. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to take it back out again. Did it have any crap stuck to the end of it? I blew out as much as I could. Yeah, a little bit, huh? Um, I am going to cut the wire off of this one and extend it onto this one to give us like an extra foot of breathing room. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Get my ass kicked. I think I'll reach now. I'm definitely getting sick of putting that in and out of there. My, my arm is like baked. <laughs> it's tight getting up in there. You want to hear the sound of a small victory? That. <laughs> right, I gotta go put some bits and pieces that I've uh, tore out of their mounting spots just to making things a little easier. How was that? That was on there. In some fashion. Like that. Get her back in. And let's go hook our battery back up. See what happens. Is it going to be the thrill of victory or agony of defeat? Shouldn't you have to get in and see what we get. Oh, oh yeah. All right. So we got nothing funky going on. That's what she needed. I don't know if we got uh I need a light. I don't know if we have a pulley at seeds or I'll say it's not turning. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. She runs! <laughs> <laughs> It is smoking around the alternator belt. It's gonna cut. Probably already did. So the alternator does not turn. But it runs! Yay, all that wasn't for nothing. At least you know what it was, too. Man, that sucked. That was a sucky job. Uh, I am going home. <laughs> we'll pick this up tomorrow. Um, at least it's on top, too, which is easy. Let's, um, let's get a socket on that. See if we can turn it backwards. See if we can get it to free up. Everything else looked like, uh, you know, the quick, quickness that I looked at it, everything looked, looked like it was turning. Yeah, it's got a socket on that. I'm not going home. Yeah, as I'm looking at it, it's got the telltale, you know, all the cracks right there, and a crack up there. The telltale sign of, I think I'm junk. <laughs> right, still, let's go get something on there so we can get that to turn. Yeah, let's go put the light right there. Oh, yeah, she's locked up solid. I'm not thinking our chances are going to be all that great on that. I'm going to get a pipe. Of course I am. Other than buying it, we're only into it for 40 bucks so far. Those other two parts are fairly cheap. Okay, I'm gonna... yeah. This way the nut's probably going to back off. Go around you. There it goes. It kind of moved a little. Yeah. It's not mean it's gonna be any good, but My, uh, my Tundra did the same thing too. It bound up. It's, uh, I think it's just the, the aluminum and steel. I, I don't even know if it's, you know, on the winding is on the inside or is it just this against the steel pulley? 
All right, we're gonna hurt, throw some lube back there, huh? Badly, we cooked the belt too. I'm gonna work that a little bit. And hopefully, she does what we want. Yeah, it's going. Maybe keep working that a little. And maybe take the tensioner back, the tensioner off, so I could feel if it's just goosing on the belt or if it's the alternator. Yeah, runs. It's a two hundred dollar alternator because it's the high output because it's a three sixty. It's getting better. What I think what I'm gonna do? Let me take the tension off. Eh, it's almost there. Uh, I'm gonna try getting an air ratchet on it and just hold an air ratchet. And see if we can get that to spin for a while. Plus the little shaking of the air ratchet. See if it'll help. My guess is probably the armature rubbing. I don't know that for a fact though. I don't know if there's any way to get to the back bushing bearing for lubrication. I don't even know if I got anything to try. I tried, even tried shooting some down in, on the inside there. Let's uh, quickly bump it over at the key. <laughs> See what we get. I don't think it's gonna go. I think it's still gonna squeal. I can't do both at the same time, so I'm actually I'm going to mark it with a sharpie so I know where it was. So I know if it's not facing straight up and down anymore. Yeah, that or stopped in the exact same spot. <laughs> I think I'm gonna uh, try shooting some loop down. I'm gonna look on the back side of that too. I'm also gonna check my local junkyard tomorrow. But um, I think I'm gonna try spraying this down, let it soak overnight, and maybe we'll work it a little bit more tomorrow. Worst case, maybe we get it right out of there and work it. Again, this is not a car that's gonna be on the road. It's just gonna be something that's uh, used uh, about four or five times a year during the winter for moving snow and then parked, so. Let's try one, one more time. Smoking, but we got it. Sparks are coming out. Is that a bad sign? <laughs> Let's see what it does. Bunch of fluid in there too that's probably burning off. It's getting quieter. Take a quick look at everything else. Sounds pretty good. See what we got, see what we got oil pressure, all that kind of stuff. Check engine, that's fine. It's still there. Temp. Do we have oil pressure on? Yeah, right there, 40. Okay, because I never even checked oil. Let it run for a minute. Alright. Let me make sure I got take a look at that wire I put up underneath too. Make sure it's tied up out of harm's way. It's not gonna melt on the exhaust or something. I don't think so, but something I still gotta check. Yeah, 
Do they have a charge gauge? You put a meter on it. Yeah. It's saying above 18 volts, so it looks like it's charging. Oh yeah. Gonna open the door. That's been about five minutes or so. Sounds decent. I don't see anything pissing out underneath. Just starting to burn off all the oil and stuff from sitting for a couple years. But nothing's pissing out. I haven't put in gear or anything yet. We're gonna leave that for another day. Sounds good. A little rumble to it. Restart. Check engine lights on for. We'll deal with it tomorrow. I'm going home to go eat. And this the next day. The air is much better in here now. Let's um see how that alternator is. Take the tension off the belt. See how it spins. See if it spins by hand. That feels pretty good. Yeah. I actually think it's fine. We'll find out, right? The belt, I don't see any burnt marks in it. I don't think it, you know, it didn't stall in one place. So it's, it's kind of like evenly smoked all the way around. <laughs> I'll, I'll eyeball that. If we see anything on that, we'll uh, throw one of them in there. What do you want to do next? We know it runs. Uh, we haven't put in gear or anything like that. Um, it's out of gas, but that gas tank is kind of, uh, questionable how it's being supported. Let's lift it up, see if we can get that kind of mounted a little bit better. Then we'll be able to put some gas in it. Or that have the gas, um, whatever's in there that's old, which is probably just a couple of gallons. If we put another five in it, kind of thin it out a little bit. All right, let's go see what we got for. So let's get a bolt hanging down from the main cross member. I wonder, I'm looking at that. I wonder if that's even going to be able to come out of there. Yeah, we can't see what we got on this side. Tucks up under the frame. I'm wondering, um, hey, we don't have to go with that. We can go with something else that's a little more uh, obtainable. I got some, uh, like that two inch strap webbing that you use for, you know, tie downs. I wonder if we, we'll hit that with an impact gun. We'll see if that comes out. We'll spray it down. Give it a shot. If it does, we can try to unbolt it there. I suspect. This one even still, yeah, this one's blown out too. We could probably even go to a different location, right? So we can come up. Maybe we'll just run some self tappers into the frame. How many tie wraps are on there, you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's held it up so far. I don't know if I want to fill that tank up though. I'm going to fill this thing up when I go to drive it over there. Uh, here we go. Let's go work on this front one first. We'll get an impact gun on there and see if that does anything. Watch your eyes. I'm gonna give this a low success rate. I think it's just gonna spin. Yeah. Get it with a, hit it with a bigger hammer. Try to drive it up with that last little quarter inch isn't making it yet. I think we come up with our own setup near it <laughs> or over it. Oh, we can just cut this right out of here. Is it going to break right off? Let's break it off down here where you can't see. I say we go with this. Looks like it should be a 
fairly heavy duty type of strapping. We can probably just screw right through it. Let me go see what I can come up with and I'll bring you back. I guess I'll show the desperateness of this situation. <laughs> Yeah, so there's that. I don't know if it would pass inspection for a road. But you got it pretty decent. Did one side first and then kind of like started the screw with that much. And as I pulled up on it, it gave me a, a bunch of tension. I took the washers, fender washers, and I bent the lip of them just so the sharpness of the corner wouldn't cut into the belt. This side to get a little bit more height on it. It's more of a straight shot coming down. I take that tie wrap assembly off and we'll try it one more time back here. Let's see what happens. The rear one I had to go on an angle because uh, the front where it was mounted on the frame side is where the two frames overlap each other and I, I can't get the self tappers through. That's, that's got to be a quarter inch at least, you know. So, and I can't go to the bed because the bed is suspended by rubber and I don't want, as the, it, the bed moves around, I don't want it pulling on the gas tank, you know? So it has to stick to the, the, either the cross members, the indoor, the frame. I think it's definitely a lot better than what it was. I don't think it's going anywhere. Go look at that transfer case. I was already warned that there's an issue with it and he believes that the uh, transfer case chain is cooked. You're gonna turn the front drive shaft. Yeah. You can hear it touching the bottom of the case. So, yeah. It doesn't sound like it's broke because it's still making contact with it. I don't know if the gears are going to be cooked with that too, or is it just the chain? I don't quite know how they fail. I'm going to go look it up. And uh, of course, that's going to be another video. I'd like to try to be able to do the transfer case, you know, and do it right on here. I think we, we could split it and take it apart. Possibly do it right here, just because, you know, it's so heavy to try to get in and out of this truck. My back's not having it. So what would this thing be? I should probably take a picture of that and try to order a chain ahead of time. So would it be a 231? Is that how, what it goes by? Yeah, I'll take a picture of that and look it up. Try to get a, just a chain for it, and if we take it apart, maybe we'll find whatever. Maybe we need more. Well, at least, at least if we have a chain, maybe a gasket set. I guess the next thing I want to kind of go jump on, because it's kind of like a desk job, get to sit down instead of reaching for the sky. Is the get see we get the driver's door to lock. The latch looks like it ripped it right out of it. And it's like somebody tried welding it before. And of course it's tore out some more. It's probably because the oh I bet you the door is sagging. So every time it, it hits the striker, anyway, I'm not gonna get it with that. It hits the striker and um racks the door. Yeah, you can even tell where it was hitting there, right? It's like that's probably where the the thing on the door is on the uh, door jam yeah so let's see if um and even up here it's blown out i wonder if we could take one of those out or both of those out maybe put a big fender washer around it and then weld around the washer to kind of give it some support we should get one of those out or two What's, what is this nub anyway is that part of something that um is that somebody's but she had somebody's goobered weld. Yeah, that's what that is. Someone's weld. Yeah, see if we can get, maybe we'll start with this one. Kind of give it a little bit of support. And we'll try to get some big fender washers behind it. Let's see if that'll come out of there. Oh, it's not even tight. Certainly, yeah, it should be enough room for threads. Hey, let's go try that. We'll support it and then we'll probably do the same to all three. I wonder if I should take a, yeah, I'm going to take a wire wheel ahead of time before the washer's on, we'll strip back some of this paint so we have something to, to weld to.
to uh, wonder if the washer is going to get in the way on this one. I'm going to go grind like that much off of it. Yeah. Like just a goober or a weld? I don't know what that one is. Yeah, we may have a problem getting this one to start. Yeah. I gotta get something behind there to try to pull it this way. Get in there with that. Probably just a love tapper. So thin, huh? Have you got it? Somebody's getting on it. There we go. I guess we could check and make sure that the door closes with all that crap on there first, huh? Before we weld it. Yeah, I thought it kind of. Let's go see. Yeah, that door's down. You can even just tell about the stripe on it. <laughs> That's why it did what it did. Probably the pins are gone in the door. <laughs> I don't think it's in the open position. Yeah. Now it is. Let's see. I know the pins are gone in the door. Yeah, definitely there's the, the height difference on it. I guess if we grab it and lift up on it. Yeah. And yeah, this is a shit box. So let's go try doing something that uh, you do for a shit box. <laughs> Find out how rusty the bottom of the door is too. Slight adjustment. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah, I might go right through the door. Like. Yeah, I think the integrity of the door is so crappy that uh, it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. All right, we're going to weld them up. It seems like it's, it closes decent. I think if, uh, you know, that's fine. Yeah, let's go buzz them so they don't fall out. Give yourself a little bit more strength. Yeah. It should be okay. These might loosen up over time a little bit, but I'll just keep an eye on them. Actually, what we could do, we probably just put a tack on them to keep them from backing off.
like they need a new tip. I say I got my money's worth out of that one. Welds are ugly. <laughs> Sorry, it's on there though. Shouldn't go anywhere. I'm not going to attack them. I'll, I'll let that be just in case I have to take that apart. I'll just keep an eye on it. If they do start backing off, I'll, I'll put a tack on each one of them and keep them back spinning. And what do we got? Like butter. Other than the smoke coming out of the top of the door, we're going to hang around for a little while, make sure that doesn't go poof. That would suck. What do you think I'm a hack? Come on now. All right, guys, we're to that time of the evening. I think we're gonna go tap out on this video. I'm trying to get them not going ridiculously long. They're starting to get kind of out of hand. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna film anymore on chasing like the little mechanicals on this. We got it decent, we got to run. That's the, the biggest part of it. And you kind of made sure that that was, <laughs> didn't dump, jump a timing chain or something like that, right? Uh, gas tank's not falling out anymore. We actually closed the door. I think we picked away, oh, the alternator was locked up. So we've got a, a couple things taken care of. There's, you know, it's got a power steering leak. We gotta look into the brakes, all that kind of thing. But time is a necessity when I'm filming, everything takes two to three times as long. So I may go jump ahead and kind of take care of a bunch of that stuff. And at some point in the future, we gotta deal with the transfer case. So we'll make that its own video. We'll uh, uh, tear into the transfer case, find out what happened to that, try to fix that. And then we can hang the plow on it and see what does or doesn't work with the plow tires i got to chase they're kind of the front ones are bald um they're kind of like a all season tread they're not very beefy so i'm going to look on facebook marketplace see if i can find you know maybe a set of tires and wheels cheap maybe that are dry rotted i really don't care again this thing's never going to see uh it's never going to see pavement it's just going to be used on a dirt trail for pushing snow and rocks <laughs> so i'll keep an eye out for that if i can't find anything maybe i'll put chains on it all the way around just kind of leave it with that uh, that rack on the back, and I think we're going to take that off. If you don't know, it's, what do they call it, track rack? The back one, if you loosen up a wing nut on the bottom, they, it'll slide forward. If that box wasn't in there, you could slide it right up to the other one, and it, it kind of gets it out of your way, so you try to get stuff in and out of the truck, like, say, you put a motorcycle in the truck. You're not whacking your head on that bar, but if you need it, you can kind of go slide it back. So that may go with my Tundra, is my guess right now. Uh, we'll see. It'll probably be on there three years from now. <laughs> Just ran out of gas. But the, uh, like I said, the transfer case and the plow, maybe we'll make down another video and I'll just kind of you know, move forward with um, chasing the uh, little smalls off camera to get it knocked out. I'm not sure when that other video will be. I'm kind of um, jumping around different projects. I'm trying to get knocked out and, uh, you know, winter stuff kind of unfortunately takes a little bit of a priority. So, Guys, I'm done rambling. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya. Like it never happened. Uh, yeah. Hey guys, how's it going? We're pulled over to a free pile on the side of the road. I see a chainsaw. I'll go see what that is in a minute. But I could definitely use that. Kind of where this is. I don't know, we'll take that. Those. Hmm. I can use that. <laughs> I'll pick the thing for a little bit. Let's go see what the chainsaw is. Maybe we could do a, a will it run. And now John Deere. You know, John Deere made chainsaws. Probably like a McCullough or something. Yeah, let's go throw that in the truck. Let's see what we can do with it. I got the thumbs up from the window. Take whatever I want. Anything in those? Those are good. Awesome. Like it's all it's all old stuff too, which is nice. It's not. killers and that's from our local fairgrounds right. 
let's go bring that chainsaw back. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna go pick this a little bit more, but I just want to show you what's here. Neat. I actually used the base of that chair for my shop chair. Load her up. Alright, quick look at what we got from that free pile. So we grabbed that roll of white wire. I'm not sure if that's single strand, like house wire. Probably is. If it's multi strand, you can kind of use it for automotive, but that single wire stuff, I don't think so. Some chips, I don't know why I grabbed those. That's a lighting thing, we'll open that in a second. We got a tote of plumbing supplies, just the lid from there. And I think this one is all electrical stuff. We'll crack them open in a second, see what's in them. That was our uh, toolbox, it had a little couple of handles in it, power strip, plugs, more plumbing, I could use that. Two of the kerosene lamps, and that one's a white lens, this one's a red lens. I think red is railroad, I'm not sure of that though. I don't know if there's a name on it. It says something right there, I think. Uh, five transmission fluids. New old stock. A couple of, uh, I, I know that's a decorker. What is that? Is that for putting the cork back on after you're done? Kind of goes over the bottle. I don't know, that's just a bottle opener. This thing, what do you think that is? Is it, so would you have, I, I don't know if this is, was always part of it or not. Is this just a candle on a light? My guess is that isn't part of it. But I don't know what this thing would be. Hmm. Like why would it have that? Nothing saying that's part of it neither, you know. Is there a name right there? Prices like made in, made in China. What's that say? Still can't read it. Thought it was funky, so I grabbed it. Huh. Smash. Just want to see if it says anything on the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe for like, maybe put a candle on the bottom and like incense come up and burn. Grab that wire. There's probably a good 50 feet on there. What is that? 14 gauge. I'm not sure what the color yellow means. I know, I think there's a difference between yellow and white. And then just that chair, because the chair that I use in here, the bottom section of it is screwed up. It's the chair looks like a motorcycle seat. I'll show you. That one right there. And the wheels keep crapping out on it. You see, there's another broken one that would change them with something, and then that one will break, and it'll change them, and that one breaks. I think I am out of wheels. I was replacing them with those black ones, and the brown ones keep busting off. So I'll see if that whole stem can just go on there, or maybe I'll just leave that chair alone. Let's see what we got. I think it's like a grow light. Let's go plug it in. See if fire comes out. Does it have an on off switch or? Yeah, I see a switch over there. Two switches. Nothing. <laughs> oh. Well, one of the bulbs are good. Bounce something off the rev limiter, tighten them up. You got two. So that's that one. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. That is bright. <laughs> yeah, my guess is the grow light. I don't know what uh, distance from subject is the subject like legal. <laughs> They got some heat coming off of them. It says what it is. Crotochrome. So this is um, for filming. I thought it was a grow light. You use it for anything, right? 
Hmm. Says Kodak. I had a very slow leak in my forklift. As you can tell by the shiniest, it has turned into a major <laughs> whoops leak. Guess I'll be addressing that this week, huh?